Osama Hamdan in Beirut. Welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you. Simple question for you. Is Hamas now prepared to stop firing rockets into southern Israel? Well, I think the big question is, is Israel ready or prepared to stop attacking the Palestinians and to give the Palestinian people their rights? This is the question, because the occupation generates resistance. The rockets is a part of the resistance. No one can ask the Palestinians to stop their resistance. But there we is... had already a peace, we had already a ceasefire for six months. The Israelis did not respect that. They did not accept to, to, to play their term, terms. So they damaged that. They, give, they did not give a new chance for the ceasefire. But there is now a, a uh, huge international effort to get a ceasefire as quickly as possible. The Egyptians have put forward a plan. Is Hamas prepared to accept that Egyptian plan? Well, Hamas is discussing the Egyptian plan and other ideas and plans. We are discussing all the proposals, all the, all the suggestions, putting a, a, a clear target to stop the Israeli attack against the Palestinians, to lift the siege on the Palestinians, opening all the crossings, to let the Palestinians have their normal life. We are studying all the proposals under those, condi not conditions, under those bases. But to be, to I be, believe to be, to be clear, Mr. Hamdan, if I may, sorry to interrupt, there's a delay on the line, but, but to be clear, the Egyptian plan makes it plain that one key element is an international monitoring force on that southern Gaza border with Egypt to ensure that there can be no more smuggling of weapons from Egypt into Gaza. Are you prepared to accept that? Uh, the, an important point, are they ready to put them in the Egyptian lands or in any other lands? If it was in the Egyptian lands, it's uh, an, an Egyptian matter. But for the Palestinians, it's clear that all the Palestinian resistance movement rejected the presence of any foreign soldiers on the Palestinian lands. You will not accept any foreign soldiers from whatever country on the land of the Gaza Strip, that is what you say is Palestinian land. Yes, this is the decision of the Palestinian organizations, the Palestinian factions. We, are, we were resisting for more than 40 years to liberate the Palestinian lands. We don't need to have more foreign soldiers occupying our lands. What about, what about forces from the Palestinian Authority as part of a monitoring force, some of whom would be deployed on the Palestinian side of the Gaza border? Well, everyone knows that those, uh, those forces are not supposed to protect Israel or to watch the borders on the behalf of the Israelis. That's, that makes them betrayers for their cause and for their own people. I think the role of the Palestinian soldiers or the Palestinian troops to protect the Palestinians from the Israeli occupation. If we want to talk about the Palestinian forces also, we have to realize that there is a Palestinian division. This is not supposed to, to be solved like this. The solution is to start the internal dialogue, preparing for a national conciliation. And after that, we can talk about the Palestinian forces. One of the important points which caused the, 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 the problems inside the Palestinian situation uh, leading to the division, the division is the security forces which tried to play a, a political role while they were supposed well, we'll, to be under the political leadership. I want to talk more about your relationship with Mahmoud Abbas and the Palestinian Authority later in the interview, but I just want to pin this down, this question of ceasefires and plans right now. If you are saying to me that you and Hamas will not accept any international monitors on Palestinian soil inside Gaza, and you will not accept Palestinian Authority forces playing a part in any monitoring force, then it seems to me there can be no deal. Well, I have to remind you and all the people who are seeing us, we tried to have ceasefire with the Israelis for three times, in 2003, 2005, and 2008. In those three times, the Israelis themselves said that the most committed organization to its commitments was Hamas, more even than Fatah, 
under the leadership of Abu Ammar and Abu Mazen. It shows that Hamas really respects its commitments, but the Israelis who was the side which always but, undermines the ceasefire. But with respect, Mr. Hamdan, with, with respect, there are people dying in Gaza today. People in Gaza want to believe a ceasefire is close at hand. If you are saying to me that you in Hamas will not accept any form of international monitoring to do what is necessary to get Israel on board for an agreement, that is to stop the smuggling of weapons into Gaza, then a deal se seems like it is impossible to achieve. Well, let me say clearly, if the problem is the presence of the weapons, let's talk about stopping sending weapons from the United States and Europe to, this, to Israel, because we are being killed by the American weapons, which, was, which is used by the Israeli forces. And instead of looking about smuggling some weapons to defend the Palestinians, let's talk about the weapons which is sent in public to kill the Palestinians. So, so, this so, will so, stop the so, killings so, of the Palestinians. So, so, so smuggling weapons from Egypt into Gaza is a right which you are not prepared to relinquish, yes? Well, let me say that in a clear way. Finish the occupation, no one will fight. If there is an occupation, all the Palestinians will fight. Before Hamas, Fatah was, was fighting the Israelis. Popular Front, Democratic Front, now Hamas and Islamic al-Jihad are participating in this fight to liberate the Palestinian lands. Let's concentrate on the main problem, let me, let the me put presence it, of the occupation. I, I'm just trying to be clear here. Let me put it this way. The, the, the French president has suggested he thinks a deal is close. The Egyptians say they're working very hard. You and Hamas have sent a delegation to Cairo. Do you believe a deal is close at hand, yes or no? Well, I believe we are close to a deal, but that doesn't mean the same published deal will happen. We are still discussing the points, and I think this, there is some points must be changed. I'm not suggesting on the media a specific change, because this is under discussion, but it's, it's have to be clear. Without important changes, the Palestinians will not accept the deal which forced them to accept the occupation. And in the meantime, I am struggling to understand Hamas's strategy. Every day, you fire a few more rockets into southern Israel. From any military point of view, they are very little strategic worth. The only value, it seems, they have is to terrorize the civilian population of southern Israel. What is the point of continuing with that strategy? Well, I have to, to say one word before. Hamas is launching a few rockets. All the international community is against that. While Israel is sending hundreds of rockets on the heads of the civilians, no one is condemning or criticizing even that. This is an important difference, how the international community is supporting Israel as an occupation, while this international community, in a hypocritic way, does not support the Palestinian rights. M Mr. Hamdan, if I, may, if, if, about if, if, if I may, sorry to interrupt, but I, I, this is very important. Let me quote to you the words of a Hamas military spokesman from just a few days ago. He said, We manage with God's help to shell crucial Zionist towns and settlements using hundreds of Grad and Al-Qassam missiles. They, that is the Israelis, are now living underground like mice, and their towns have become ghost towns. That is the mentality of the people who fire the rockets. You know as well as I do that any country, Israel, but any other country too, would have to respond to that mentality with force. Well, I want to tell you on the other side what they are saying. Everyone heard Ovadia Yusuf is saying, the Rabbi Ovadia Yusuf is saying, kill them by the plane as you like, in the way you like. Everyone knows what Ezra Wiseman has said. We are not a state with an army. We are an army who has a state. The one who bombed a huge neighborhood, killing Salah Shahada, was asked by the media, the, 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 the one who led the airplane. They asked him, what you felt when you bombed this old neighborhood? He said, nothing, but I felt that the plane shaked a little bit. This is also the mentality which is killing our own people. Shimon Berez, the Israeli president, a few days ago yeah. went to the media saying we did not kill any child while we are talking now about 215 children killed till now 
out of 700 Palestinians in this Israeli invasion. M so if Mr. you want Hamdan, to talk may, about the I mentality... May, uh, you, you haven't yet answered my question, and, and you could spend the next few minutes simply answering every question I ask you by telling me what the Israelis are doing, but frankly there's not much point because I am interviewing the Israelis as well about this situation and putting the same rigorous, challenging sorts of questions to them about their strategy. But I want to question you about your strategy.